my own intro this year? All right, cool. Nah. You don't have any idea why you're here. You, you won't care in two minutes. Anyway, all right, um, a little housekeeping. Um, there we go. Um, <laughs> this is... Uh, this is not the talk to bring your kids to. You brought your kids, take your kids out, or, you know, uh, it's on you from here on out. Because <laughs> cause I'm sure this isn't the first talk that somebody's going to say fuck in, but it is, in fact, my mission to say it more than anyone else. So, okay. So, who the fuck am I? I am Duncan Manutz, exchange student from Deutschland. Thank you. I've been in InfoSec for 15 years, um, IT for, uh, for a little more than 20, and uh, I'm sick of all of you doing it wrong. That's my talk. I'm going to talk about how you're bad at your job. <laughs> and if you think, I'm, you think I'm lying, you have some homework. Okay. Um, so by the way, right, um, <laughs> just a PSA. All right, let's get this started. <laughs> Damn straight it is. So, I've been in information security for 15 years. I just said that. Um, I want to run down a scorecard. Information security has... Uh, so, uh, raise your hand if you know what the triad is. All right. So, who wants to shout out what the triad stands for? <laughs> Chinese crime. <laughs> That was amazing. No, the, the, uh, <laughs> wow, that's so much more right. That's such a, I, yeah, that's a better answer. That was, that was good <laughs> on so many levels. Okay, but the information security CIA triad, right, is confidentiality, uh, integrity, and availability. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. No, that was a DerbyCon talk. You're not at DerbyCon. Uh, and I, I've not been to rehab, but perhaps I should go. All right, and I'm going to stop. So, so these are kind of the three promises that right, we're supposed to keep for the, uh, the organizations that, uh, that we serve at, the, at the, uh, the pleasure of. So confidentiality, quick check, how we doing? Not real good. Like, not at all. So these, this is just a, a bar graph off data loss DB. And, um, you know, uh, maybe last year wasn't the worst year ever, but it still fucking sucked. Look at all the breaches. That's a lot of breaches that have been reported. Do you suspect there might be more that weren't? <laughs> I do. How about availability? Oh, there's Akamai's DDoS graph. DDoS is so fucking cheap now, there's literally a group out there called DDoS for Bitcoin, and they will stop DDoSing you for the grand total of two Bitcoin. <laughs> That's how fucking good you all are at your job. Right? That effectively, like, this is, they're, like, they're like, they're like internet squeegee scam artists. Right? You're getting beat by them. How about integrity? Now, in the sense, in the sense of the CISSP and the CIA triad and all of that, they're talking about your ability to protect the integrity of data, but I think we have a different and much bigger integrity problem within this industry. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a shitty thing. Fuck these guys. Yeah. Sorry, we weren't good enough to be Mantex, so uh, I guess we're going to sell to oppressive regimes that rape, torture, and commit genocide. That's fucking rad. Um, yeah, uh, Eugene Kaspersky's a crazy bastard, so I, I, you know. But yeah, unfair practices. We troll our own competitors actively, right? Fake data breaches as an extortion as business model. Like, this is all shit that's going on in our industry. That is so fucked up. 
So is there anybody who wants to tell me that, uh, that they think that they're kicking ass or that we're doing a good job? So I got a lot more slides to go. You're not kicking ass. You're not even employed. <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. Uh, no, it's I'm an asshole and I'm not wrong. It's not but. Okay, so what's the fucking point? If we're not if we're not coming through, right? If we're not delivering, what the fuck are we doing here? And and it, and it occurred to me though, right, that I had to stop and think about this because companies are spending record amounts of money. Talent is at an all-time high. Yeah, sure, there's a massive shortage, but I can't blame the shortage for the last round of bullshit I just showed you, right? That's too many of the wrong people in the field, in my opinion. So, with that being the case, why? Why does security suck? Why are we fucking up? Why is this industry so ineffective? And I got to thinking, and I'm going to tell you why. Let's start with your day job. So if you uh, follow uh, the SANS library or ISO 27K, um, there are 23 mandatory policies, 27 optional policies to be deployed under ISO. That's 50 security policies, right? Averaging somewhere in the four to eight page range. Your employees have never fucking read it. You read it just the once a year. You have to read it when you have to update it so that the auditors like it. Tell me I'm wrong. This guy hates you. I hate you too. But here's the thing. It's not even your fault, right? Because you're forced into this. Regulation and industry standards are fucking oppressive. They're a monster. There are 242 controls in the PCI DSS version 3, right? And everybody knows full well that lots of those controls have subparts and multiple tests, and then you have to scope them so they grow exponentially. The same is true High Trust, which is a leading framework uh, for healthcare, and then the Cloud Security Alliance, 134, 136 controls. But by the time they're scoped and applied, right, how many individual tests are you running and validating and processes that you're following and boxes that you are checking? That's a lot of shit. Is it working? So let's ask that question, is PCI working? Since 2010, there have been 878 publicly reported breaches involving PII. There's a follow-up, for, so for those of you wondering uh, if that includes PHI, it does not, your slide's coming. <laughs> the top 10 breaches, so the biggest dumps of card numbers that we know of, so that's gonna be primarily in the US, all passed their rock. Right? They, they were all certified. They were all compliant. They all followed the framework. At some point, a third party who was paid to be an expert in that standard vetted them and said that they were doing a good job within 12 months prior to their breach. You're offended by a fact? Go fuck yourself. No, there's not. No, okay, all right. Well, so you want to argue with me about this? What? Because um, you're right. There are four brands, but there are really three companies. You would agree. I'm actually counting the little shit box you just quit. <laughs> oh, troll harder, bitch. Anyway, the fact remains that right, the card brands that are enforcing and requiring this and issuing this, they've been hacked too. So, oh shit. I think we can all agree, PCI, right, so I picked 2010, we can go back and, and see more before this, but I picked 2010 because that was the full implementation date for all the level ones, right? So it's a mess. How about HIPAA? You had one job, right? Keep those records private. 
Nobody wants to know about your Valtrex prescription. <laughs> well, that's not true. The Chinese government clearly wants to know about your Valtrex prescription. No. But anyway, so 1,183 breaches. I found it was really interesting. I, so I got this from uh, the Public Policy Center on Privacy. Uh, they have a fantastic searchable database that you can uh, find out all these humiliating facts from. Um, so 1,183 reported breaches of PHI. So here's the thing you should know about healthcare if you don't already, though, is that the rules around, so that's 1,100 unencrypted laptops and backup tapes and USB drives, right? Like, that's what that shit is. 1,100 of them didn't have an adversary. 1,100 of them were just sloppy and careless. And here's the thing. That's only half of the reporting period. Right, because mandatory public reporting didn't go into place until five years after compliance was mandated by federal law. So that 1100 that you know about, that's all since 2010. But everybody was supposed to be fully compliant by 2004 at the absolute latest. So, but, you know, a third of the records stolen all occurred in 83. Uh, of the uh, of the attacks where there was an actual adversary knew what the fuck they were doing went got the data took it left oh and uh, the enforcement body health and human services <laughs> they've been run through so bad that they actually took their budget for 2014's external HIPAA audits of healthcare providers and payers and pulled it back into their own security budget to fix their own shit on one hand that's terrifying. On the other hand, kudos to them for at least recognizing they had no fucking credibility left if they went ahead and audited other people while hackers were still active in all their shit. So regulation, kicking ass, making a difference, not so much. <laughs> So speaking of regulation and enforcement, let's turn back to you and your shitty gazillion pages of policy at work. When was the last time you fired somebody? When was the last time you picked up the phone and called HR and said, this person put a sticky note with their password on a, on a monitor, walk them out tomorrow, and it happened? Right? How many of your policies have ever been used to fire somebody? I know you got at least 20, you probably got about 50, you maybe got one that somebody's ever been fired for, right? And that's the one about porn. I'm not wrong. So, maybe it's time to recognize that policy enforcement isn't even a thing that you're doing. So what do you have those policies for? Oh, that's right, the auditors. My favorite thought is that next year we'll come back to Gurkhan and I'll be able to troll this guy as the president. <laughs> no, it's fucking scary. It really. <laughs> it would be a huge problem. Huge. So, but but forget forget the forget the future president. Let's talk about my favorite past first lady. <laughs> Sorry, wrong one. So I actually have a point here, though, right? Um, I'm gonna. I'm not trying to get political, uh, although it's funny right now. Politics is very funny right now. Funny, sad, anyway. But so, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has been in the news a whole lot lately because she hosted a private email server where she put all of her email, and there's a good chance that she was doing some state business on that email server. Uh, it seems like there's some backup tapes that went missing. Apparently she hired people from healthcare. And, uh, well, I, I'm just connecting dots, that's all I do. So, so here's the thing though, is everybody's up in arms, and I've heard a lot of people from our industry like go on the press and talk about how much bullshit that is and how that's inappropriate, and I want you to stop and think about how you would feel if you found out that a key executive in your company was running their own email system on the side instead of yours, right? Like how pissed would you be, right, if this person wasn't following 
the corporate standard and using the central email system and solution that you served up. You'd be pretty fucking pissed. You would wish you could fire that person, but you can't. But you can't, right? But here's the thing. I'm actually not mad at Hillary. I'm actually not pissed. You know why? This chick. How quickly everybody forgot that an E1 private from the Army docks the whole State Department. Set back foreign relations in some circumstances over a decade. So can you blame somebody who's charged with highly sensitive negotiations for wanting better control and a tighter loop around their comms? But what do you want to bet that there's a FIP certification for the mail system where the communiques that Chelsea Manning ripped off, right? I mean, like, you get it. This is military-grade compliance, which for those of you in the military, that you can laugh. That's cool. But, but right, like, so, but that's the thing, right? This, is, this, isn't a, this isn't a, hey, we're a business and we don't want to deal with regulation and cost effectiveness, right? Like, th this is the military. And, like, nobody budgets. They just do it. So... At the end of the day, right, the standard is broken. You get it? So I'm going to slaughter a couple other cows. I'd love to take credit for this, but by the way, I don't know like if anybody else is old enough to actually read basic or too stupid to teach yourself in the next five minutes. <laughs> but let me explain. These go in order, and go to <laughs> means go to that line number. So, so here's the thing about vulnerability management. I'm not going to tell you that in the real world, bad guys aren't using exploits to pop systems and really do really damaging shit, but you, you have a failed premise here. This is a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of work spent on trying to make this perfect, right? And PCI forces a lot of this. But, but every industry's got this, right? So we're slamming in patches, we're, we're scanning all the things, which means we're probably knocking over a few of the things, right? You have a whole group of people dedicated to make something like this happen. But they only know what they know. Or rather, I should say, they only know what the vendors know, right? So, so an interesting thing happened. Uh, by the way, the MJR in the bottom there is my favorite security curmudgeon in the world, Marcus Ranum, uh, and this is right out of a paper of his entitled the, the Top Six Stupidest Security Ideas, and there is a chapter on vulnerability management, right? Penetrate and patch is, is, is fundamentally broken because straight up penetrate is not what the attackers do, right? If you've patched everything, they just choose a new avenue. Oh, and just because you've deployed all the patches, who thinks that their entire external facing infrastructure right now, fully patched, has zero vulnerabilities? You're retarded. <laughs> In fact, I'm sorry to retarded people. So one of the funny things that's happened over the last year, right, is that you've got uh, you've got uh, hacking team got doxed, uh, and then there was also some some news about uh, you know it was it was discovered that after after a particular O day, I think it was Heartbleed, um, came out and was made public that uh, that the 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 PLA right the the Chinese hackers whoever the hell they are right um, we'll get to the boogeyman syndrome later but that they were co-opting these exploits very quickly and turning around and using them really, really quickly. Or it could just be the fact that now you know to fucking look for it and now you see it. Right? That's really, in, by and large, that's what's happening. In the hacking team dump, they paid 30 grand for uh, a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, flash exploits, right? that would work very well in a phishing campaign or a watering hole attack, right? Know anybody who's really good at that? Been kind of busy at it lately? 
That's my point, right? He'd already sold this to a lot of places, and it's not like his research wasn't recreatable. So you already know that there were other adversaries. By looking at Hacking Team, we get a chance to finally see, yes, this O'Day went, went public when they got doxxed, and all of a sudden we started seeing exploits. But at the same time, it's also right there in the dump that they bought it from a guy who didn't give them an exclusive on it. So everybody that drew the conclusion that China quickly co-opted that is an idiot. <laughs> China bought it, actually probably found it. By the way, I love your monthly publication, you pen testers. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. I got like 12 more of them, but they couldn't fit on the slide. I just, I just picked the hokiest ones. You're right. He probably is. He has a shitty job. So user awareness training, right? Because, hey, if we can't patch the servers, let's patch the people. Now, okay, so, but has any of you ever said there's no patch for stupid and that your users are the weak link? I expected way more hands. The rest of you, you should be ashamed for feeling that way. Not that you're wrong necessarily, but I want to talk about something when it comes to security awareness training because this is my new favorite piece of bullshit. So mathematically speaking, security awareness training is never going to work, right? What's a, what's a passing grade, right? Like 90% is like a really good grade, right? What if you got 99% of the people in your company to be so good at spotting phishing that they never clicked a link? You got 1% of your company that's a foothold every time. That's right. So admittedly something's better than nothing but you're fucking that up too we're gonna play a little game called spot the fish is this a fish or is this something that your corporate company security awareness training program would have sent you <laughs> what are the headers users don't get to see headers you can't train them sorry Maybe you should write better detection and prevention. <laughs> so how about this one? I had to black this one out a little, so that might give you an idea. Is this a real fish? I am an ass, you are right. So, so which one's the fishing one? Is it the first one or the second one? No, you're wrong. The answer is neither. The first one is a bullshit training exercise, and the second one is an email sent by a vendor hired by that company that requires mandatory inclusion by employees. You're training people to not do something and then turning around and making them do that thing. Way to go, IT department. That's fucking brilliant. So why isn't this working? Because we're stupid. This is for real. This is just for those of you that follow me on Twitter. So the last point I want to make, the thing I want to get to, is as much fun as it is to laugh at other people's misfortune, this has a huge negative effect on our industry and our ability to be effective. And I'm going to spend a, the rest of the talk talking about this. Because ultimately, this is the problem. We are blaming people that are broken into by hackers and had their data stole, right? And I get that there's two sets of victims, right? If your data was ever stolen, if you were one of the people unfortunate enough to un come to learn that the uh, Chinese uh, intelligence service now has your military record, that sucks. You're a victim. But so is OPM, right? They were broken into. Could they have done more? Potentially. Possibly. If they weren't, you know, too busy with other things that we force on them. But so here's the thing you have to understand. Everybody's been popped or will be popped, right? Stop and think about the vertical, the industry that you work in, right? And now think about who you know is, dude, they've got the best team. Like, they're good. Like, we learn from them every time we hang out with them. I would like to work there. Right? That org in your vertical, they've been hacked and you know it. Like, 
you can probably Google the article that talks about their breach. Because that's how it is. Unless you work, you know, South America or something. Right? Which, by the way, you know, it's a long-ass flight. So, but that's the thing. There are no sacred cows. And every breach has the same root cause. And what do I mean by this, right? Because, you know, if you, if you study these things closely, you'd be like, no, that was a phishing attack. That was a, you know, that was a lost laptop. That was, you know, they used Heartbleed, right? Um, SQL injection, right? So, but that's not the root cause. The root cause is the same thing every time. The root cause is that all of the security resources that they had available to them were looking at the wrong thing, right? They were focused on the wrong stuff. And whose fault is that? Laugh it up, that's you. So, I want to spend a little time thinking about this. Why are we blaming victim organizations for getting popped? Why is this a thing? Why is there so much press about this? Like, why, why does everybody in this room know who Brian Krebs is, right? And, you know, and, and, and he's hardly the worst. He's probably the best in our field at reporting the terrible things that happen, right? But his readership is up because this is salacious and it's interesting. So why does the public love the data breach? The public loves data breaches, one, because hackers are amazing. No, but really, I mean, by and large, right, technology, even though everybody has it, is still magic to a lot of people, especially outside of our industry, right? I just downloaded a whole movie to the little box in my pocket, and I'm going to watch it on the plane. Hee, <laughs> that's magic. Now, if people knew the fucking, like, bailing wire and duct tape that was required to make those servers like stay up and and be functional and provide them that service like if they had any idea what the back-end infrastructure looked like they'd, they'd be horrified but <laughs> but it's magic in my hand but the other part of it right is is that hackers aren't tangible right i can't so so if somebody walks into a bank and robs a bank what do we get we get camera footage of somebody that looks like me right <laughs> And you can say to yourself, hey, look at those jeans. And, and, uh, and, you know, and maybe he's got like, you know, a ripped shirt or something. You're like, oh man, bad upbringing. I could probably get on Google Maps right now, look at that bank and figure out, you know, maybe which apartment building or, you know, trailer park that dude's running back to, right? Like we all feel like we might be able to solve that crime because we've seen the guy. And you know, then if I saw that guy come into a bank, I would do something. Me too, I'd leave. But hackers aren't tangible, man. They're fucking ghosts, right? I can't, you know, we have all sorts of memes, but for real, right? Like, how do, what are hackers, right? Balaclava, hoodie, right? Latex gloves, typing on the keyboard. So, so that's part of it, right? They're an interesting story, and the reason that we blame the companies that were broken into is because we don't feel like there's anybody to point at, right? I can't explain to my mom that an army unit in China just stole her information, right? Like, and it wasn't really an army unit, it was really a contractor, and like, by the way, we do that shit too, and you know, um, like that doesn't register. But she can be really, really mad at the company that lost her data, because they should have protected it better. But the reason we do it is even worse. The reason we do it is we're lying to ourselves. We want to focus on what they did wrong, what they missed, what they should have been doing better so that we can convince ourselves that we can be good enough that it won't happen to us. We're focused on the how they did it. We're focused on the mistakes. We're focused on trying to grasp some last little shitty bit of hope that maybe if we do all the things, it won't happen to us, right? So we blame the victims because we have to. Because what's the next thing? Like, so when a, when a story breaks on Friday afternoon, what's the email waiting for you on Monday afternoon? <laughs> you know the words, right? Hey, I saw this story. 
could it happen to us? Right? So you have to run around. You are required to run around and figure out what the fuck went wrong over there and figure out whether or not those same issues apply to your network. Because I promise you this, because I've done this, when you just send them back an email that says, yes, period, send. <laughs> they show up in your office. Your CIO don't think that's funny. <laughs> That's not the answer he's paying you for. But it is the right answer. The right answer is it absolutely could happen to us because the attackers don't need that one vulnerability or that one stupid operational mistake or that one thing that made its way to the papers, which, by the way, was probably wrong anyway. <laughs> right? Jur like, for real, I have no faith in anything I see on TV or the news anymore just from having worked in security so long that now that we're in the headlines, I go, man, they really fucked that story up. Are they fucking up other stories too? They are. Hacker ghost. So here's the thing, though, is I really want to talk about what the solution is. Um, one, I got a lot of shit last year for like just leaving on a bummer note. Um, but sorry, man. Shit's a bummer. <laughs> but I'm going to try and make this not so, not so fucking terrible. So shaming does a couple of things that really enable some of the worst and prevent some of the best that this industry is capable of providing. Shaming justifies litigation and conceals data. If you've ever been involved in a data breach, you know that the only thing there are more of than IT people and consultants in the room is lawyers. And so everything's a secret because we don't want to get sued or because we know we're going to get sued. So we're going to get sued and we don't want to share anything. They've got to figure it all out. They've got to discover all of it. And we are clearing no one because what if it got out? Well, we'll answer that question about what if it got out. The thing is that the mistakes aren't as important anyway as it is the information about the attackers, the tools, the tactics. What did they do? So how helpful is it for me as a security person to hear that your company got popped because you had something that was vulnerable to heart bleed sitting on your network and that's how they got in? Is that useful to me? No, not really. But what if I knew what kind of data they were after, what sort of tools they were using, where their infrastructure from their bot was, what the phishing email looked like, what the address was, right? What if I had all that information? What if everybody had all that information? What if the attacker had to burn it all every time? All of a sudden, we're going to price some people out of the game. But that's just it. They don't have to, right? So we've been watching kind of the 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 year of the healthcare data breach unfold and then lead into OPM season. Um, and I'm sure we're not done. Somebody else is next. Oh, wait, we'll talk about them in a minute. But not to shame them, because that would make me a hypocrite. And I'm a piece of shit, but I'm not a hypocrite. So, but the thing is, is that, right, so why did we have, why do we have the seasonality, right? Because the same thing happened to retail two years ago. Right? It was just like one after another. Because the first case breaks and now somebody knows what to look for and they go looking and they find it everywhere else. Right? But what if everybody had that information as soon as it happened? What if they had to start over every time? They don't. It's cheap. It's easy. And that's our fault. That's on us. Right? Who else is supposed to do this? I'm pretty sure security is in your job title. Sharing is caring. So something happened the other day uh, as Gurkhan was, uh, was getting started. And that is that uh, Dow Jones Media uh, and also, um, I don't know, uh, Rupert Murdoch and uh, his company, um, whatever they're called, I forget. Anyway, um, thank you for laughing at that. The rest of you are going, I don't know either. So they've been compromised going back to 2012. 
huge infiltration, potentially looking at sources, right? But so that's been part of the statement. So they, they issued a letter, right? Admittedly, right? This is like three years of breach. This is not the best. This is kind of bad news. But they came out with a public statement. But then you've got the CEOs of both of these companies also going on the press yesterday telling people, yeah, we're pretty sure that this is widespread. Other people need to be looking for this information. And we're willing to tell you more about it if you're in our sector and you reach out to us privately. That just fucking happened. That's amazing. A CE it's weird that a CEO had to go on the news and say, this is, this is impacting other people. This is not just us. These people were after a lot of information from a lot of different sources, and we have a good reason to suspect why. If you might be one of them, call us. And here's the thing, it's not that intelligence sharing doesn't happen now, right? But what is, what is, what is threat intel these days? It's a fucking product, right? <laughs> it's a product. So let's talk about that for a minute, just a second. Now, I'm not saying that th all threat intel is bad. Some of it's good, some of it's not, but how do you know? I do know one thing. I do know that there's an actor out there that uh, some of you may know. Mandy, it likes to call him APT3. CrowdStrike likes to call them three different names. And that's the problem is, is that the intel is so focused on attribution, right, that even they're missing the point. Anybody, anybody buying intel that disagrees, that says that, hey, that intel is really solid? You like all those MD5s they're emailing you? They're pretty badass. Those are hard to change. So anyway, that's my point, is that until we fix this aspect of our industry, until we get over the shame and the secrecy around a compromise, because it's happened to everyone, and if you're sitting here going, it hasn't happened to me, it's like, that's going to be a bummer when you have to come out in 2016 and talk about how you were popped going back to 2013. Yes? Okay. So this is our mission moving forward, right? If you want this industry to stop sucking, it's time to start peering up. I mean, shit, you came to a hacker conference, probably got drunk with a few of these people, told some embarrassing stories. Maybe you worked on CTF, hacked some shit, forensics challenge, shared some info. It's not hard, it's fun. Shit, we go out of our way, we make vacations out of doing this stuff. So professionally, as weird as this sounds, our industry needs to move more in this direction, right? The community can't just be where we go to have a good time. The community has gotta be turned on all the time. And it's gotta be about working against the adversary. Fuck compliance, fuck their rules, right? Like, I mean, yeah, you probably don't want to walk into the office on Monday and open with that. <laughs> it depends. Maybe your severance package is better than mine. You could trigger that shit. Have a good time. But realistically, right, like, it's time to stop pretending that there's a framework or there's a set of things that if we just do all the perfect things perfectly, then we'll be perfect and we'll not have any problems. Like, 10 years ago, we could have debated about the, the validity of, of external attackers trying to really do damage to companies, but I think there's no debate left. The adversary is real. It's our job to defend our organizations against them. They collaborate, they sell information, they sell tools, they have a marketplace, they have lots of marketplaces. So we've got to stop clamming up and stop talking and not talking about them and not talking about what happened to us and instead open up as a community and begin making more general sharing of information because right now I'll tell you this it is a haves and have nots game and there are not very many haves in this game right now but as a have do you know what else you don't have you don't have all the intel from all the have nots because they don't have it but they've been hit too so by being better than them, you're not helping them. Years ago, I, when I was consulting, I would tell people about the, you know, the, the joke about the, about the, the, 
the the two uh, the two hunters in Africa came around the corner, and there's a cheetah about ready to pounce, and the one guy grabs a pair of Nike running shoes out of his backpack and he throws them on, and the other guy says, "Dude, you can't outrun a cheetah." And he said, "I'm not outrunning a cheetah. I'm outrunning you." And my customers used to think that shit was funny because I'd be like, "Cause that's it. We don't have to be perfect. We have to be good enough to let the business go on, but just enough that." You're a harder target than someone else. And that shit's not true anymore either. I actually feel bad about telling that joke now because it turns out I was lying. I didn't know it, so maybe I was just wrong. But that's the problem, right? There are so many adversaries, and they are so under-addressed. The walls are not high. The challenge is not hard, right? Why is China famous for using fishing? Because they fucking can be, right? Like, why? Because it works. Because we're still using 40-year-old protocols and still asking people to do stupid things on a daily basis. We have a lot of work to do, but it starts here. It starts with the industry and it starts with us trying to bring everybody up and make everybody better. That's really the secret. I need all of you to stop sucking. In order for me to help you not stop sucking, I have to, wait, I said not stop. No, definitely do stop sucking. But we have to stop sucking together, right? Because whether I'm, whether I'm actually any better at this than you are or not is irrelevant because as long as there's a problem. Oh, you guys are bad people. <laughs> you think I can't hear you, but I, I hear you. Pieces of shit. So, okay, you don't have to stop sucking or swallowing. Aw, I love you too. So anyway, <laughs> wow. Well, apparently this shit show is over. <laughs> now get the fuck out. <laughs>